Welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. I have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Christy and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please be sure to check the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Illinois. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Emmanuel College. Great, give me one second, let me get my screen up. Great, so welcome everyone. My name is Olivia Fotoraro. I'm an assistant director of admissions at Emmanuel College. Um, I know this is quick, so we'll go over a little bit of everything um, and I'll draw my contact information too at the end if anyone has questions. Like I said, I'm Olivia, my email's here. I will post it again because um, I know we are short on time. So Emmanuel is a small Catholic liberal arts college. We are right in Boston. Um, so we're right down the street from Fenway Park and then Longwood Medical Area is right behind us. Uh, Boston for students with us tonight um, who maybe aren't as familiar, is very walkable, it's super easy to get around. Um, we have three T-stops right near campus that'll take you pretty much wherever you have to go. And there's just so much happening, obviously, on our campus with clubs and activities, but also just outside of campus. Um, Boston is like a huge college town. Um, I know we have at least one other Boston college with us um, this presentation, so you'll hear from them too. Um, but definitely a great place to be a college student. Here's just a little bit about us at a glance. Um, so like I said, we have about 1,800 undergrad students. Um, we have 16 Division three sports. We have 70 different major minor programs, and those programs are split up into the five academic schools, which you see here. So we have business and management, education, humanities and social sciences, nursing, and then science and health. Um, our students are very involved. Uh, they do about 50,000 hours of community service annually, um, and about 85% of our students will participate in community service. Um, it's not a requirement, it's just something people are really interested in. Um, I think that kind of speaks a lot to who we are as a school. We also have four years of housing available at Emanuel, uh, which is definitely something unique. Um, like I said, considering we are right in the city. Um, so if you want to live on campus, you always can, um, but you never have to. Um, but the option is there if you want it. Um, most of our students do live on campus. So about 90% of freshmen live on campus and about 85% of our total student population lives on campus. Um, we have small class sizes. Average class size is about 20, um, 13 to one students to faculty ratio. So you're definitely going to get to know your professors and your classmates and start making connections early. Here is the full list of all of those major minors. Anything with an asterisk next to it is a minor or a certificate program. Everything else is a major. Um, our students, like I said, can get involved in a lot of different things. You could do a double major, a major and a minor, um, combine different interests for sure. So there's lots of things to explore. All of this is on our website as well. If you wanna click around and explore more programs and see what the classes are like for each one, uh, definitely feel free to do that. Something else about us I think is important to mention um, is that everyone will do at least one internship um, while they're at Emmanuel. Um, so definitely, um, you know, like I said, we're in Boston, so there's a ton of things to get involved in. Uh, about half our students will do more than one internship, um, and about half the internships take place within two miles of campus. Like I said, being right in the city makes it really easy to get your internships. Um, you know, it's just a lot more convenient than having to, you know, get on a bus or commute or drive anywhere. Um, it makes it easy to kind of fit into your class schedule, which is nice. Um, you guys can see some more stats up on the screen here um, about employment rate and grad school placement rate, two things that are definitely very important. <laughs> You know, when you're looking at schools, it can seem early, but always good to be be looking into the future there a little bit. 
So we can talk about student life a little bit. Um, so we have 16 Division three sports, like I mentioned, here is the full list. Um, we also have a lot of club sports and intramural sports. Um, we are in a consortium called the Colleges of the Fenway. So it's Emmanuel, Simmons, Wentworth Institute of Technology, Mass College of Art and Design and Mass College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. So we're all in the Fenway neighborhood. We do a lot together. You can cross register courses, uh, but intramural sports and club sports are definitely a big part of what we do all together. Um, so that's something to note here as well. Like I said, our students are really involved. Um, community service definitely being a big one, like I mentioned, but there's over a hundred different clubs and activities you can get involved with here on our campus. Um, you can also be a part of the clubs and activities at those other schools, like I mentioned, just kind of widens your horizons even more, gives you more options. Um, but we have social organizations, we have cultural organizations, music, dance, all kinds of things you can think of. Um, my biggest tip for any students with us tonight is definitely get involved and get involved early, no matter where you end up. Um, it's good to kind of put yourself out there, um, you know, meet new people, meet people who share common interests. So definitely get involved um, wherever you end up. And here are our requirements to apply. They're pretty straightforward. Um, so we're on the Common App, it's free. So don't have to worry about waivers. It's free for everyone. Um, we will get your application essay. We'll get your transcripts from all high schools. So if you've transferred at all, we'll see those grades. We need two letters of recommendation, one from a guidance counselor, one from an academic teacher. Um, TOEFL scores for international students. Our tests optional, um, besides nursing, um, we will be requiring test scores for nursing students. Um, and then we're doing interviews virtually or in person. Those are recommended, but not required, but you can definitely check those out. And then here are our deadlines. Um, so you have the early action one and two, and then regular decision. Um, I definitely recommend that you apply early if you can. Um, and if anyone out there is interested in nursing, um, definitely try to apply early. Um, but that pretty much wraps it up for me. Here are just some social media handles. Like I said, I'll drop my contact information below, um, but thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. Our next presenter will be from Suffolk University. Great, thank you so much. I'm gonna share my screen as well, hopefully this works. Okay, so we'll get started. Um, so Suffolk University, we are also located in Boston. We're in downtown Boston. I've got a map a little bit later on in the presentation that I'll show, uh, but some quick facts about the university. We have our Boston campus, as I just mentioned, but we also have a campus in Madrid, Spain, uh, the difference. Uh, we've got about 4,500 uh, undergrads in the Boston campus and Madrid, Spain is probably closer to about two to 300 students, uh, but students can start in Madrid. They can start in Boston, whatever you prefer. We take the common application on the common app. One of our questions is, do you want to apply to the Boston or to the Madrid campus? And you just select it from there. You could be considered for either or depending on what you'd like to do. Most students who go to Madrid, they're going usually for a semester either uh, in sophomore or junior year, but we do have a number of students each year uh, that will start there. About 35 to 40 students will start as freshmen. They'll do the first two years and they do the last two years in Boston. Um, once again, up to the student's preference, but predominantly I'm gonna talk about the Boston campus. So here we go. 70 plus academic programs are available in the College of Arts and Sciences, as well as the Sawyer Business School. Uh, we've got about 11 majors in the Sawyer Business School. Um, and whatever the math is for the College of Arts and Sciences. So quite a few choices. We also have minor programs as well. There's accelerated graduate programs that are available uh, that include the MBA, Master of Criminal Justice. Um, there's Master of Public uh, Administration. So lots of different tracks to take advantage of. We also have a Master's of Mental Health Counseling as well. We also have a joint partnership uh, with the law school. So if you'd like to continue on with a law degree, we have a three plus three program where you can get your undergrad and your law degree in six years. Um, that's something for a person who really knows what they want within the law, uh, works out really well. You start right away. Um, obviously it's condensed. So, uh, you move pretty quickly through that. Uh, once again, not for the undecided student, although the most popular major for incoming freshmen is undecided. So you do not have to know what you want to do. Um, when you enter into Suffolk, you've got that, that flexibility to move around within the curriculum. Now, the average number of students per class is just under 20. We have a 14 to 1 faculty-student ratio. 
Um, study abroad is very popular, not just the Madrid campus, but we've got study abroad locations throughout the world that you can take advantage of. It's 50 plus programs. Um, so it's certainly something, um, if you're thinking about going abroad, something you can do. Recent accolades, we threw this one in there just for students who might be outside the area. Um, you can see the categories here. With the business school, I wanted to point out, we do have the AACSB accreditation, which is one of those tough uh, accreditations to get um, certified in quality and of course, certain expectations within the curriculum. Ways to get involved, we've got 100 plus clubs and organizations, everything from Greek life to um, uh, cultural organization, student government association has control over a half a million dollar budget. They decide how to spend it. The students are, are involved in that decision making. Uh, lots of performing arts groups from acapella groups to jazz bands to uh, musical theater, you name it. Uh, there are lots of different outlets there. We have 19 varsity sports for division three athletics. We also have club and intramural sports. Um, I think a couple of years ago, we had a Quidditch team that, that performed on our on the common, the Boston Common, uh, if you're a big fans of Harry Potter. Um, maybe not not anymore. It doesn't seem like as many students are familiar with that one. But um, where we are in downtown Boston, I want to get to that. This is a map. Um, hopefully you can see uh, the landmarks here. But the State House uh, kind of falls right in the middle of where we are. Um, so certainly, if you're interested in government, uh, politics, any of that, we, we are located right around the State House, the Gold Dome in Mass. Um, Boston Common, as I mentioned, uh, very famous. Um, that's kind of our quad space. With the neighborhood, we've got three different courthouses. The Financial District is about a 10-minute walk away. Government Center, which is where City Hall is, is just a two-minute walk away. So everything is really accessible. We've got the four major metro lines, blue, orange, green, and red, all within a block of where you're taking class. Uh, really easy to get around the center of, Bar center of Boston. Um, as was already mentioned, um, the city itself is not that big geographically. It's over 200,000 college students are residing there throughout the year. So being in the middle of all that, you've got full access once again with the Metro. One benefit of the location too is internships that's built into the curriculum that you'll, you'll whatever major you decide to do, uh, the internship oftentimes is required and you'll have that opportunity to get out there, build that professional experience as an undergrad uh, that way, when you go out into the field, you have a better understanding of what you're getting yourself into. And also, you have a better idea what you don't want to do, which is just as important as figuring out what you do want to do. Um, so oftentimes, students will be able to uh, factor that into their daily routine. So maybe your class ends at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, your internship starts at 1030. Really easy to fit it in um, throughout your daily schedule. So location is... Can't say that enough, our residence halls are right there as well. Um, we guarantee those first two years of housing and those last two years, generally it's a combination of possibly on campus to off campus apartment living. And there's, there's plenty of apartments in the city of Boston that we will help students find. So uh, that is the location anyway. And this is our social media handles. If you'd like to follow us, we've got uh, the admission uh, related um, Instagram as well as Twitter. So. Uh, Great follow. We oftentimes will post different announcements, reminders, uh, early action uh, deadline, November 15th, regular decision deadline is uh, February 15th. So depending on your comfort level, what you'd like to do will depend on which application you provide. But early action obviously is, not, is non-binding. Um, so whatever you prefer, uh, we usually roll, will turn into a rolling decision uh, process um, where you uh, once an application becomes complete, we usually send a decision within two to three weeks. But I'll throw my contact information in the chat. Thanks everybody for your time and I'll turn it back over. Thank you. Our next presentation will be from the University of New Hampshire. Hey everyone, um, my name is Evan Beals. I'm one of the admission directors here at the University of New Hampshire. Um, as many of us will talk about tonight, um, as you kind of go through this process, uh, you'll realize that all of us talk about location. Um, all of us will talk about how place matters. And through this process, uh, we do want to just recognize that the University of New Hampshire specifically is located on lands and waterways, and people and uh, we acknowledge in our gratitude the land itself and those that have stewarded it through the generations. Uh, as you maneuver your way through this process, uh, please know that this is an important part of uh, being a, a public flagship in Grant University, uh, just recognizing um, 
the PNs, the generation that have come before us. Um, that location to dive into the University of New Hampshire's connection, um, we are located in the seacoast region of New Hampshire, only about 45 minutes from Boston, straight up Route 95. Um, we're about 45 minutes from the White Mountains of New Hampshire, and about minutes from the ocean. Uh, see from the map here, expanded out to the entire country at the top there. Um, from the Chicago area, a quick two to two and a half hour flight uh, right into Boston um, or up into Manchester, New Hampshire um, for the South Carolines folks um, right into one of their hubs in Manchester, New Hampshire. So as you can see from those photos on the sides there, uh, both kind of opportunities for academic connection of our location, but also just the connection for students who like the outdoors and want to go for um, a hike or go ski on the weekends. That's a cool. Um, for the students who want nothing to do with kind of being in the outdoors and, and going, uh, spending time there, cities of Boston and Portland um, are a quick Amtrak train ride away. We're a medium-sized institution, so about 13,000 uh, undergraduate students, about 2,500 graduate students. Majority of our students do come from outside of the state of New Hampshire, so you're in good company. Um, we really have great representation from all over the United States, and our international students are calling over 70 different countries home. Um, so really, as you can see here, a great representative population of students. At UNH, we have over 150 to 200 majors and programs available for you. I believe, hi, Evan. Hi, Hello. sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I can hear you. You are going out just um, a little bit, uh, but if you don't mind, um, we'll go ahead and move on to Fairleigh Dickinson University, and then we'll come back at the end after um, WPI, and then you can come back and finish your um, presentation. So uh, Fairleigh Dickinson University. All right. Hello, everyone. We're just getting this up and running. Great. Um, so hi, my name is Danielle Balsamo. I am one of the admissions counselors at Fairleigh Dickinson University. Um, and fun fact, I love hearing about Boston, but I am a New Yorker at heart. And so we're gonna turn around and talk a little bit about New Jersey and New York. Um, so we are actually the largest private university in New Jersey um, with two different campuses in the state. So our first campus is our Florham campus. It is located in Madison, New Jersey. It's a little bit more of what we consider a traditional campus. A lot of open green spaces, um, beautiful old buildings, um, whereas our metropolitan campus is going to be more of an urban um, campus. It is about 10 minutes from downtown Manhattan, um, just six miles away. Um, so it's a lot of fun over there as well. So between our two campuses, we have over 100 majors, minors, and concentrations. So those are going to range from your sciences like engineering, nursing, um, our pre-medical programs, forensic science, criminology, criminal justice, to our more of art style of business. Um, you're going to see our school of art, so graphic design, creative writing and theater, um, etc. So despite being the largest private university in New Jersey, we actually have a very small liberal arts feel to our campuses with about a 12 to one student to faculty ratio. The largest class I've ever seen on campus is about 32 students and we don't actually have a classroom on campus that can hold more than that. So you're gonna get a lot of individualized attention. We also offer 43 four plus one bachelor's and master's degree programs. 
Um, so this is going to range from our education programs to our MBA and creative writing. There are a select few that are not offered, so we do recommend that you reach out to us to find out more. Outside of that, we have over 112 clubs and organizations on campus. Um, one of my favorite clubs on campus is actually the Pokemon Go Club. Um, this is a club that a couple years ago when the app came out, our students wanted to get together and hunt these Pokemon. So they came together, they created a club. And this is actually a pretty common occurrence on campus. Um, our student life uh, department works a lot with our students, again, to create the individualized attention and give them the experience they want. This is a quick snapshot of our metro campus. Um, this is looking over from our pedestrian walking bridge because campus is actually divided in half by Hackensack River. Um, as you can tell, it's a little bit more of that urban feel, more modernized buildings in contrast to our Quorum campus, which has a gorgeous mansion, fountains, and it's a historic campus, which actually is one of the old Vanderbilt Twombly estates. So every student is going to actually be taking a class in this mansion if you take part in our forum campus. Outside of just the feel of campus, there are a couple of different um, things that make our campuses additionally different. So that's going to be um, our athletic teams. So we actually have both D1 and D3 teams. So we've got 21 D1 teams at our metro campus and 23 D3 at our forum campus. We differentiate these by having different mascots at each campus, but it's a great way for our students to sort of get the best of both worlds. Our metro campus is also a little bit bigger. It's got about 2,800 students undergraduate, whereas our farm campus is 2,600. Um, this has to do with the proximity to New York. Our farm campus is about a 40 minute train ride directly into Penn Station, whereas metro is a 10 minute Bus, or, um, bus ride. So a lot more students are commuting to Metro just means that we have a little bit larger student population there. Because of this, again, it is more of a commuter campus with about a 50% of students living on campus um, in contrast to 72% over at our forum campus. So outside of our standard classrooms, we do offer a lot of experiential learning opportunities. So we have the standard ways of our internships, mentoring and networking, guest speakers, um, and career development. But we also have specialized programs like in our graphic design program, in which we have uh, large corporations like NBC um, and ESPN or Disney submit um, projects for our students. Our students then get hired as project managers and come out with portfolios um, of work they've already completed. That's in our graphic design. But that's just one of the many ways on campus we really work actively to keep our students hands on. We actually also offer two international campuses that we own. So our first is going to be our Roxton, England campus. You'll see it in the top right-hand corner. Um, it's located in an old abbey um, it, that was created in the 1100s. Um, and then we have our Vancouver, Canada campus, which is going to be more of an urban campus. Both of these are in really great locations and are offered both full semester abroad as well as short-term abroad. If you're not interested in going to one of these two locations, that's totally okay. I know I didn't, I went to Italy. And so that is with our study abroad office. They help you find an international partnership to any country, any school that you are interested in studying at. We do recommend that you look at that more complete list and reach out to Brian, our study abroad head to look into that. In terms of application deadlines, we do have a few deadlines for you to choose from. Our first deadline is November 1st. It is an early decision deadline. Second one is our December 1st early action deadline. Um, it's important to note early decision is binding, whereas early action is non-binding. However, both of these decisions allow you to have a $50 application fee waiver, a $1,000 annual renewable grant, and then additional scholarship and accelerated decision. If you're ready to apply for regular decision, that would be January 31st. And after that, we're gonna be unrolling based on space provided. If you guys have any questions, again, my name is Danielle. My information is here. I'll also post it in the chat. And then here are just a quick couple of quick, if you wanna take a picture, um, QR codes for you to be able to go on and interact with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, we will have Bard College at Simon's Rock.
Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm going to start again because I, I think um, I'm not sure that anyone could hear me. <laughs> um, so hello, welcome. Um, and I'm going to be presenting about Bard College at Simons Rock. My name is April Shandor. I use she, her pronouns and I'm an admission counselor. Um, We're located in Western Massachusetts in the Berkshire Mountain area. Um, it is a rural campus, but it is also close to the number one um, small town in the U.S. It was rated by Smithsonian Magazine as the number one um, small town in the U.S., um, Great Barrington, Massachusetts. It has um, a lot of arts and culture and performance, um, performance spaces and theater and things like that. So although, um, although it is located in a more rural area, and as you can see in the um, in the aerial view here, um, it it also has a lot to offer um, because of its proximity to Great Barrington. Um, there are also a lot of outdoor things um, that students can get involved in, like skiing, um, lots of trails for hiking, um, kayaking, things like that. So if you like the outdoors and being outside, um, it's a great place for those kinds of things. Um, so I'm going to move on and talk about, just go through some fast facts. So you can see um, our location, as I mentioned, it's Western Massachusetts. It's about two and a half hours from New York City and about two and a half hours from the city of Boston. Um, and it's a relatively small school. So um, the number of full-time students is about 400 students and um, the average class size is 11 students per class. Um, so this is really a, a college for students who prefer um, smaller class size environment. There's a lot of opportunities for discussion, um, discussion with the other students as well as your professors, um, building relationships with your professors, working closely with them, um, also with your academic advisor. Um, there are a lot of opportunities for internships. Um, both on campus and externships off campus. Um, they work with a lot of different um, companies and organizations in the local area. And some, um, if you're able to do internships remotely, um, there are also opportunities in Boston and New York City for, um, for those types of opportunities. We have um, some really strong ratings from the Princeton Review for um, academic rating as well as um, rated in the top five for best undergraduate teaching and innovation um, by the US News and World Report. Um, we're also on the national list of LGBTQ plus friendly colleges. Um, so it's a very um, inclusive and welcoming supportive environment for students. Um, there's also a lot of diversity um, on campus. About 17% of our students are international students. Um, and these are some additional rankings. Um, we've had um, about 10 Fulbright Fellows in the past 10 years or so. Um, about 78% of recent Simons Rock graduates have gone on to um, graduate study at tops at the schools of their choice, um, and a lot of them being um, top schools, top high, highly ranked schools. And just a little bit of history, we are a unique college. Um, we are the very first early college in the nation. And so students actually start before they have a high school diploma. Um, so you can apply for a college to begin after you finish 10th or 11th grade. Um, and we are, because we're the first early college, there is a strong history um, and pedagogy for working with younger students and students who haven't um, completed high school yet. So um, there is a, an approach to teaching because the population of students is younger and um, the professors are accustomed to working with um, younger students. And really it's for um, students who are just motivated, they're seeking a greater challenge. And so if you're in high school and you feel like you're ready for college, if you're currently in 10th or 11th grade and you feel like you don't want to wait until after you graduate from college, um, Simons Rock opens some really great opportunities um, for students in that situation. So the mission, um, one of the common phrases that we use is that age doesn't define intellect. Um, so 
students don't need to be the traditional college age of 18 um, or 19 to start college. Um, many students are ready to enter college um, and be immersed in college curriculum at an earlier age. Um, so again, um, why we stand out, um, designed the curriculum and the college itself is designed exclusively um, for high school students who want to complete their bachelor's degree two years early. That's um, typically around the time that students would enter after 10th, sometimes after 11th grade. Um, and it is a residential campus. Almost 100% of the students um, live on campus. You will get a Bachelor of Arts degree after four years, so not just college credit, and it's not a dual enrollment program, but it is actually um, a fully a full degree, a full bachelor's degree after four years. Um, and I'm just going to move on a little bit so that I can um, get you a little more information. We have we have offer several dual degree programs, including a um, an engineering dual degree program with Columbia University. That's a 3-2 program. So it's a three-year pre-engineering degree program at Simons Rock and then two years at Columbia. Um, students receive a Bachelor of Science degree in engineering. We have a dual de degree program with Vermont Law School, which is a Bachelor of Arts at Simons Rock and then a master's um, at the law school as well as with Upstate Medical University, a Bachelor of Arts in pre-med, um, no MCAT required with um, priority admission into Upstate Medical University's MD program. So those are a few of the dual degree programs that we have. And we'll need to um, move on. Um, if you wouldn't mind, you could drop your information in the chat for students. But if we could have um, WPI come up next. Thank you so much. All right, so hello folks. It's so awesome to be here with you all and some of my other colleagues. I've enjoyed learning about your institutions. Um, I wanna briefly introduce myself because I know I can be long-winded and I will give you all my contact information at the end of these quick six minutes. But my name is Michael, I'm an admissions counselor um, and I work specifically on the diversity and outreach initiatives team here at WPI. Um, and I'm gonna be giving you the presentation for this evening. If I can get it to forward. There we are, awesome. So WPI, better known as Worcester Polytechnic, or should I say not better known, but also known as Worcester Polytechnic Institute is um, located in Worcester, Massachusetts, which is roughly about 45 minutes to an hour south of Boston. So we've got some awesome Boston colleges um, and we are just south of Boston. However, I never like to say that and allow it to steal the thunder of Worcester. So Worcester in, itself, in and of itself is the second largest city in New England. Um, and we also are home to 11 other area colleges and roughly 38,000 students will come to study here each year. And that's super fun because it creates a nice collegiate atmosphere once students are here. Um, and with the residential communities and different things like that, you'll be able to really easily mingle um, with students at different schools and really just learn a lot more within your collegiate experience here at WPI. Um, however, with that being said, we are a city and we do have transportation, all types of public transportation. You can get to Boston, New York City, beaches, skiing, and so much more. Um, and there's just lots of stuff to do for students to stay plugged in around town. And so Worcester Polytechnic Institute is a STEM institution. And so you'll see that roughly 50% of our student body, um, 5,500 undergraduate students will major in one of our 12 areas of engineering. And then you'll see students that will also focus on some of the different areas of biology, mathematics, and even business. So we definitely are a business school. We have 50 plus programs. I would say, one of the cool things about our students here is that um, at WPI, we aren't a STEM institution that really scrubs our students of their personality and their other academic interests. And so humanities are a big deal for us. And you'll see that in just a moment when I talk about our projects. 
But aside from that, you'll see that our students are very busy. Most of our students are gonna be either um, completing a major in double minoring, completing two majors in minoring. Um, some really ambitious students are even completing a master's degree um, alongside their bachelor's degree in as little as four years. But you'll see that many students are able to also complete a bachelor's and master's in four to five years, depending on where they wanna end up in industry. But one of the big things that I've been paying a big attention to, um, a lot of attention to this past year is our retention rate. So to give you a little bit more information on that, I happen to find that the retention rate is one of the only stats that, can, that we can give you as an institution, right? That tells you how successful we are at placing students um, into an institution that they're gonna be happy at and successful. And so ours is 95% and we've had a lot of great opportunity to work alongside students that were really made for the way that we do things here at WPI. And if you are an undecided student, there's no need to worry about 20% of our students will apply as undecided. Um, however, once you're accepted into WPI, um, you're able to move on to any of our degree programs um, as you please. And so that's the really cool thing. You can be accepted. We don't cap our programs. So really, um, depending on what you would like to do, you're really able to complete that here. And so one of the things that make us distinct is our term system. So whereas some of our other schools are going to have two normal semesters, you're going to have four terms. And so a term here is seven weeks at a time, and each student will take three classes um, during those seven weeks, and they're not abridged courses. So instead of meeting once or twice a week, you'll meet four to five times a week. And you'll see we have four traditional terms. And in between A term and B term, and in between C term and D term, you'll have a true 10 day break so that you can rest, recuperate, and jump right back into your next term. So alongside that, we also have a non punitive grading policy at WPI, meaning that in every course that you take, you'll either receive an A, B, or C, or a no record. And a no record simply is what it sounds like. It won't show up on your transcript. It's not factored into your GPA. Um, and it will be as if you never took the course. And with our flexible curriculum, the cool thing about that is whether or not you were able to pass the class or you wanted to take another stab at it, there are no prerequisite courses at WPI. So you really are in charge of everything that you would like to do. Um, more about our projects. So we have four major projects that students will be able to participate in. And this is our study abroad component. So most students are able to either complete this project on site um, within the US or at any of our 50 project centers located around the world. We have a project site on every continent except the Antarctica. But the first one is a great problem seminar, which is a really um, introductory level research um, to get you started. The second one, that humanities and arts, is gonna be a project that focuses on healing the world, curing the world, or feeding the world. Um, that IQP project is gonna be done typically your junior year, and it focuses on interdisciplinary teams. And we normally send 90% of our students overseas to complete that project. And then lastly is the MPP, where students are able to focus on an institutional research project focused on their major, um, and really pad that resume for when you're ready to head out into industry. And so I know my time is pretty much spent. Um, I knew this would happen, but I will drop my contact information um, into the chat box below. But all of this information is available on our website um, and you can definitely see that we are test blind and no application fee at any of the rounds. Thank you so much. Thank you and uh, the University of New Hampshire. Hey everyone, <clears throat> we will quickly try this again. Um, we just have a couple more slides to quickly cover here. <clears throat> so let me just share my screen and we will take care of that. So I left off just talking quickly about our college divisions and academic options. Um, so there's over 150 different majors and programs available to you across five different college divisions. Um, the majority of our students, about a third, or maybe not majority, but the, the highest number of students or most popular major for incoming students would be declared in the College of Liberal Arts. Um, you can apply specifically to your program all of our programs are direct entry. However, you are welcome to come in as an undeclared student in any of our college divisions as well. 
<clears throat> UNH is a land, sea, and space grant status institution, meaning that there's funding coming from the federal government, um, private and public entities um, that funds undergraduate level research um, at the top tier. So UNH is a research one or tier one research school. Um, and if you remember, the majority of our students are undergraduates. So the majority of this funding and opportunity uh, being sent right into the undergraduate research arm um, of the university. So we really enjoy allowing students um, to, to work and get their hands dirty and, and get into the field, whether it be in research, um, internships, uh, things like that. Um, our undergraduate research conference is one of the oldest and largest in the country with over 2000 students presenting each year. Um, I will wrap up uh, quickly talking about application process here at UNH. Uh, we are an early action school, um, so you are welcome to apply by November 15th whenever you are ready to do so. Um, there's no binding decision processes here at UNH, so the ball is always in your court. Um, we are on the common application. Uh, we only require your high school transcripts and at least one letter of recommendation as part of that process. Um, we do not require test scores, uh, and the test scores are, are typically not utilized um, in your application or scholarship decision process, even if you do send them in. Um, so really focusing on your high school transcript. Um, and I will kind of leave my um, contact information here. We do have a saying here at UNH that every day is a great day to be a Wildcat. Um, hopefully we'll have you joining us on campus or checking in with us sometime soon. So thanks everyone. Thank you everyone. And please feel free to turn your cameras on as I share my screen for our first question for the Q&A. And question one, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? I guess I'm first. Um, I think my biggest one that comes up sometimes is it can be hard when all your friends are looking at the same places or looking at the same major, uh, but you really have to, you know, do what's best for you. Think about what's going to be the best fit, um, you know, for what you're looking for after high school and don't be afraid to kind of go out and on your own, um, do your own thing and find something that's really going to be the best for you personally, not what anyone else is doing or wants you to do. I would just add to, to students, concentrate on what you can control. I think a lot of times there's a misconception that you need to make everything up in senior year and all of a sudden it's lots of involvement that might happen in that senior year or maybe they're loading up on the advanced placement courses. Just concentrate on who you are as a student, who you are as a person and focus on those schools that are the best fit for you. Don't try to add all this on at the very last minute. Just focus on you know what you're in control over right now at the moment. Um, I would say I kind of in the same breath and same conversation, a little anecdote someone told me in, in my process was that college was a match to be made and not a prize to be had. Um, and so as, as we all have this, you know, there are uh, certain things that you're looking for to, to be comfortable. I think a great kind of point that Michael made when he talked about the uh, retention rate was that those retention rates show so many things and like making sure that students find like a happy, successful place. Um, and a lot of that is just finding like the good fit for you, not the fit for other people in your life that feel that they need to provide that feedback to you. Yeah, kind of going off of everything that has already been said, but really doing your own research. Um, talk to your, you know, your guidance counselor, talk to your admissions counselor at every school you're interested in, and then really try and visit. Um, you know, we can only say so much in six minutes. So it's really hard for us to give you the entire view of the school. So the best way for you to truly find out if the school is for you is to visit, is to talk to students, faculty, staff, counselors um, and really dive deep into that research.
Yes, I agree. Just um, researching the schools, doing um, a lot of background research to see what the best fit for you is. Um, and if you're able to visit the schools or to do like a virtual visit or attend, a lot of schools now are having virtual information sessions and different types of virtual events. So even if you can't make it there in person, um, attending those types of sessions and just asking as many questions as you can. Sometimes schools are also um, able to connect you with professors or um, advisors that might have time or be willing to talk with you if there's a specific program that you're interested in. And that could be helpful to um, just to get to know the programs a little better and see if it's a good fit for you. Awesome. And to echo what all my colleagues on the screen have said, um, remember that we're real humans on the other end of your application, right? So sometimes we can have this allure when you're pushing send on your end of the common app and you're like, oh, what's gonna happen? Um, these are quite literally the people who are gonna be reading and making decisions on your applications. And these are all fun, smiley people that I see on the screen with me. So feel free to reach out to us. Um, I think we spend a lot of time engaging in this sort of a platform and we would love a conversation. At least I definitely would with any student that would give me the opportunity to chat. So reach out to us. Talk to us, let us know what's on your mind. Um, and remember when you push submit, it's real humans on the other end um, with beating hearts that are reading these applications. Thank you all, I appreciate that. So I would just like to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five minute survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back the schedule and sign up for more sessions. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Illinois. Thank you, have a great night.